Yo, who the heck is that? <laughs> is that a 180 gallon aquarium, Zach? Six feet of Six pure by two by aquarium two. somehow being lifted by my car? Hey guys, welcome to another video. I don't know what you've seen so far, if anything. Uh, today we, we moved a 180 gallon aquarium. We got some nice stones here. <laughs> Thumbs up again. And uh, shoot, what else? We, oh, we got like a bunch of aquarium stuff. So we got this crazy long python. It's a hundred feet. hundred foot python. hundred feet, yeah. And now what we're doing, as you guys know, as is titled in the video, we are rescaping the 40 gallon aquarium. It stayed looking like this for a very, very long time with some minor tweaks. And today I'm hoping that we can accompany a lower plant load because we have a really difficult time growing plants in this aquarium and that might change. We're hoping we can change the water chemistry uh, in the basement, you know, on ground level. But if it doesn't, I wanna be prepared and that's why we're getting a lot more hardscape, thus all the stones. So um, I'm really tired, we're really tired, so we're not gonna do a lot of filming. It's 11.30 at night. <laughs> it's 11.30 at night, so we're not gonna be doing a lot of filming while we're scaping, but you guys are gonna see the before and you're gonna see the after, and I'm gonna talk about it after. And Zach and I are probably gonna do some live streaming. So even though this video is like three months after we've actually done this, Check check him out on TikTok. His TikTok will be Zach's Aquariums. Right there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, see you guys in a bit. Enjoy the music. Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. I hope the 40 gallon was looking great in that cinematic, but uh, I gotta say I am suffering from long-term dissatisfaction, unfortunately. 
I, I just don't know what I want from it. Like, so many things, guys. I'm like, oh my goodness, what if I put every, like, all these things in, and then I put all those things in, and I'm like, well, it could be better, right? Like, there's some way out there, some other fish that I just haven't found yet that's gonna make this perfect, you know? And one of the things I was looking into recently are half beaks. And basically, I'll show a clip here uh, of someone else owning half beaks, and I'll credit them, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, but half beaks are basically this um, this top dwelling fish, kind of looks like a gar, and it's got a very long jaw on the bottom, which doesn't move, and then a very short jaw on the top, which uh, does move. And to be honest, it's kind of a plain fish. <laughs> you know, it's it's not super colorful. It's kind of like the blood fin, I think, where the males have a little bit of red on the ends of the fins, but other than that, not much color, not much color. It's interesting, it's probably expensive, but is that the point where I've gotten to with fish? What are we even talking about right now? <laughs> Should we be talking about the 40 gallon? No, we're talking about this right now, and if we go over 10 minutes, then I'll deal with it. But um, I don't know what I want in my aquarium. I don't, I must be at that place where I'm just looking for expensive things, because that's, and it's not like I'm pulling this money out of my bank account, right? Like I'm just working from a reserve of money that uh, that I already have right now. And that's from selling fish, from selling plants, which are not growing right now. My dad's working on the water softener. Hopefully he's fixed it by the time this video comes out. Maybe, we'll see. And it's, it's, it's I don't know, the water softener is just difficult. And with the water being at 9.0 pH and 180 degrees uh, general hardness, which is, very high, very high. Um, I, it's a hard to, I have a hard time growing plants, which means I have a hard time getting new income, which means my expen my expank, <laughs> my expensive tastes are um, not granted, you know? So, and I don't even know why they come about. Like, um, I, I do try to save money. I try to look for the cheaper options. And so I was looking at killifish and stuff like that. And I ended up getting guppies. You guys know a few videos back. I got guppies and they're pretty cool. I wish they grew faster. I thought I'd put the fry in and it'd be like, weak, boom, adult, you know? And they do breed pretty fast. They get to sexual maturity very fast, um, but they just kind of seem to be grown pretty slowly. Um, I don't know what's up with that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to sell them for much either. Um, but now I'm like, well, I wish I had killifish. But then I'm like, why? <laughs> Why do I need killifish? Why do I basically need just the more expensive version of this colorful fish, you know? Obviously, they're not guppies. I think they are live bear, are they? Uh, there's not a whole lot of difference. And if, you know, if you get two fish like that, if I got a guppy and if I got a killifish and I put them both in the same aquarium and I showed someone that aquarium, they would kind of not see the difference, you know? They'd, they'd see, ha, both, both of those are fish. Well done, sir. <laughs> but to us, who have been in the hobby for a long time, we, we kind of want to experience everything, you know? We're grasping at whatever is the best option, and maybe there isn't one? So as I'm looking at this 10 gallon, as I'm going over the 40 gallon later on in this video, hopefully we get to that point, <laughs> um, I, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm looking at new fish, you know? like. I do want to be at the point, I've always wanted to be at the point where I get a bunch of fish, I make escape, and it's done. Settled, done. It's just, it's in my kitchen, it looks nice. That's, those are my pet fish, I have them forever. Awesome. And yet there's something in me that's, like I said, it's, it's long-term, it's a case of long-term dissatisfaction. Uh, I, I always think that there's something better, you know? I'm always wanting to switch it up, and sometimes that is great, you know? Like, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be putting out videos. And I don't do that for the videos, I do that because I'm dissatisfied. <laughs> um, but I do want to be at that place still where it's like, I don't have to move anything. And there is a cost to moving stuff around all the time. When I, when I do that, stuff could die, you know? Like, um, when I first moved the 40 gallon from this table into the kitchen, I can't believe it was on this table. I'll show you guys a shot of it here. 
of what it looks like because it's it's kind of thin <laughs> honestly i'm surprised it can hold the 10 gallon sometimes but i had the 40 gallon here for a while and we had i think we had ghost shrimp in it and we had maybe we had corridors in it by that point we definitely had zebra daniels oh the zebra daniels but when we moved it we put it on the table in the kitchen and a bunch of ghost shrimp died and that felt really bad all the ghost shrimp have died by now like the population has completely died out but it felt really bad when they died and i think that happened again when zach and i rescaped the 40 gallon uh two weeks ago by your time i think uh a couple of the auto sinkless died i hope they didn't i really hope they didn't um but like i keep counting and there's a lot of plants there's a lot of places to hide and they're probably alternating in and out um, but I only see four at a time where I should have six all the time. So that's worrisome. Also the, um, goby, I only ever see one goby and I thought that maybe it was just one switching back and forth, but one was definitely bigger and one was definitely smaller. And I only ever see the bigger one these days and the smaller one def definitely didn't <laughs> grow that fast, uh, on a dime. I, I must have lost it somehow. And it's difficult to tell with the snails in there because... They do a great cleanup job. They're terrible, but they also do a great cleanup job and they get rid of dead fish and they stop ammonia from being a big problem. So they're great that way, but I also don't know if a fish has died. So anyway, so that's sort of my note on dissatisfaction. Let me know in the comments if you struggle with the same thing. Um, it's probably better than MTS, multiple tank syndrome, because at least I'm not investing a bunch of money like hundreds and hundreds of dollars into lots more fish tanks and burning through electricity that way and you know at least i'm keeping the money in the system you know i spend money i make money i spend money i make money all through the aquarium but it it does take a lot longer and there can be more casualties when i'm moving stuff around to try and get fish out to sell again so it is difficult uh, and again let me know if you have similar experiences in the comments. Now, finally, let's talk about what's going on right now. So in the 40 gallon, we rescaped it. Wait a sec. Wait a sec, this is the rescape video. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> that was weird. You guys probably like, rescaped two weeks ago. What the heck? So in my mind, it was like a month ago, but I'm releasing the videos kind of out of order so that I can get the product reviews out and stuff like that. So, uh, the the rescape that you guys just saw <laughs> in the cinematics let's talk about that now so i'm gonna say i really like it i don't know if i really like it just because it's something new or because it's actually better than the previous version uh it definitely does set me up for um more dissatisfaction but uh i don't know i like it <laughs> i like it for now Goodness, that's uh, that's my mantra for this YouTube channel. I like it for now. Um, I the only thing that has stayed in my aquarium since day one, if we can uh, pretend these cichlids never happened, uh, would be Kitster. Kitster will always stay in there. He's my pet fish. Everything will always be um, centered around him. And on the note of Kitster, this new style of the aquarium does really well for him. Um, I, I made those perches so that he can actually sit in the flow and he seems to really like doing that. I'm sure I have a couple shots, uh, or I had a couple shots in the cinematic for that. I still haven't filmed that yet, so I don't know what's coming up. Um, but he, he looks really good in the flow. I think he really likes it. The auto syncless really like it. I hope all six are still in there. Anyways, um, the, all the fish like it, except for probably the phantom tetras and maybe the clue loaches. The, all, the goby also really, really likes it, so. Um, the phantom tetras are not really a streamlined fish, you know, they're kind of like angelfish, just kind of sitting in place and minding their territories. Uh, but I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm dissatisfied with them too. Oh no. I don't know guys. I need to take a day and just be like, okay, what do I want with this aquarium? <laughs> because like, if I'm just thinking about it five minutes out of a day, I will always be dissatisfied but anyways so i think the the phantoms obviously don't like it because they're not really a streamlined fish i mean all fish are streamlined but you get what i'm saying um the clue loaches i okay so here's the thing i want to add more fish <laughs> and uh the place that I'm, I'm wanting to add them 
are on either the very bottom level. I feel like I'm squeezing out as much space as I can from this aquarium. And I don't know if it's the best thing. Somebody stop me. Anyways, so uh, on the bottom layer, I'm thinking that's where I have the most space. I have a lot more crevices. I don't want anything that's going to sort of attach itself to rocks anymore. I don't want any more uh, fast flowing species. These are kind of going to be more the cave dwelling species. So those come out to uh, Corydoras. Uh, Zach turned me on to um, Corydora, uh, the albino Corydoras. So not peppered Corydoras or salt and pepper Corydoras, both of which we've had before and yet I still come back to Corydoras. <laughs> These are the green Corydoras, but the albino version. And I think they would re look really great. Goodness, English. <laughs> I think they would look really great because they have uh, that reddish pink. Uh, they also have a little bit of green, which matches up with the shiny green that um, the uh, Bloodfin Tetras have. We have so many species in the 40 gallon right now. Oh my gosh. Um, and so they'll match up with the Bloodfin Tetras and they also the red like the Bloodfin Tetras. So basically it's a Bloodfin Tetra school that stays on the bottom if that makes sense. Just to kind of um, keep your attention on the top and bottom and keep your eyes moving around. Like I said guys in a lot of other videos, this is not just um, uh, a, a, a pet project. <laughs> This is not just like a project where I'm taking care of animals. This is also kind of an art style and you got to balance it. And that's probably why I'm always so dissatisfied because if the, it looks really good, then I'm worried that the animals aren't getting what they need. And if the animals are getting what they need, I'm like, oh, maybe it doesn't look really good. And I'm still trying to find the balance. But anyways, the Corydoras are the first option. The second option are like them, but it's just more coolie loaches. So I think I'm down to four. Cooley loaches, which is kind of sad. I started off with seven, so it's not that bad, but I, you know, ideally I'd like to see them hit the, uh, the 10 year mark. I know that's high hopes, but I really would like to see it. Either that, or they're all just really good at hiding, and they are really good at hiding, so maybe there's still a lot in there, but there's not enough to make them out, uh, to make them come out all the time. Now, I don't know um, if it would really be worth it to get more to make them come out more because plants and cover are also a factor. Now with this rescape, we've added a lot more hardscape, so that might help, um, but I think plants are a really big part of it and plants are not my strong suit. So the idea of more coolie loaches is still there. Um, if not to just boost the numbers, it's to keep any other bottom dwelling fish from out competing the coolie loaches because with the way they are now with the way they act right now the coolie loaches don't come out at all and obviously that really hurts their feeding habits so if there's more of them i'm hoping that they're um since it's going to be coolie loaches versus coolie loaches they're going to all be able to get the same amount of food on that bottom layer but if it's like corridors versus coolie loaches then they might get out competed um so that's just kind of what's going on in my head and I'm not gonna sell the coolie loaches probably because they are really, really hard to catch. However, I might put them in the 10 gallon at some point. If I stop making it cold water or, or um, temp temperate, temperate? <laughs> if I stop making the 10 gallon uh, a temperate tank, which is kind of like the 60 to 70 range, then I'll probably put coolie loaches in here. A mess, guys. The last idea is an interesting one um, and probably the most unrealistic one, if I'm gonna be honest, and that is the peacock gudgeon. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of other options that'll fill the same role. Um, it's kind of the same role that the cichlids had when I had them, the uh, the peaceful cichlids when I had them, and that is sort of that, that bulldog presence. You know, not the tank boss, he's not beating other fish up, but he's the, he's the, he's the real centerpiece, you know? He's not moving around fast, he's not a schooling fish, but he's got some sort of distinctness, he's got some sort of bulk to him that draws your eye to him right off the bat. The only problem with uh, adding the peacock gudgeon is number one, it's another, uh, another source of competition for food, and I wanted to have fry in the 40 gallon, but if uh, my egg scatterers have to get their eggs past not only themselves, but also the coolie loaches and a peacock gudgeon, which is going to be constantly looking for small animals and small fish to eat, uh, those fry are not gonna have a very good chance of surviving. So at this point, it's it's like 
Do I add more? Do I take out something to put in more? I'm probably gonna sell the guppies. Uh, I'm glad I got this experience with the guppies, but they're probably gonna be sold. Uh, if we move over to the 10 gallon real quick, um, or actually we'll stay with the 40 gallon. I'm thinking the half beak and the 40 gallon, maybe either that or the uh, 10 gallon, but now on the 10 gallon, uh, the hornworts in here, it's working really nice for the uh, cherry shrimp. I would love to keep cherry shrimp in here and hopefully um, breed them out to for, for a long time, for a lot of generations. And the guppies have been okay with that, but I've been wondering what if I did pencil fish in here and I still did it unheated for the summers, you know? It's not that big of a difference if it's heated versus unheated. And then, well, does the Borneo loach stay or does the Borneo loach go? I don't know, and then there's also the snail problem. It's like, well, maybe I should just get um, a bunch of dwarf chain loaches and they'll, those will just solve all the snail problems in the 40 gallon. But, oh my gosh, welcome to my mind. <laughs> welcome to my mind. <laughs> but we also have the assassin snails in the 40 gallon, one of which has died for sure. Super unfortunate. I think they were like five or seven dollars each. So kind of expensive for a snail. Um, un so unfortunately, one of the assassin snails died, which lowers my chances even more of being able to breed assassin snails. Um, now that kind of flunked out right off the bat because when I put them in the 10 gallon, they didn't eat any snails. So that's kind of a bummer. And then I realized doing research later on that, um, or maybe I did research while I was at the store. Mistake. But I realized through my research that uh, you have to have a male and a female and you can't really distinguish which are which. So I bought three, which is not a very good number when you're buying uh, an unknown quantity, an unknown gender ratio of uh, snails or anything. So now it's doubted that I'm even gonna have any offspring from these assassin snails, and I'm probably not gonna make any money back. So that is sort of the mess that I'm in right now. Uh, in the future, <laughs> in the future, we're gonna go to La Niche, which is uh, a nice fish store in Quebec that Zach's been talking about a lot. We got one more month of summer um, by my timeline right now, so we have uh, quite a bit of time. You know, we have enough time. Uh, we'll see what's there. We'll probably, we'll hopefully sell the guppies off before we go there. Uh, I do have somebody that's willing to take all the guppies for free. So that's uh, a good plan B in case I can't sell them. And then we'll just see what's there at La Niche. Maybe we'll see something super crazy that we just have to have, kind of like the gobies. And uh, we'll have a nice video uh, out of that at least. And maybe it just fits that nice. Uh, niche. Wait, La Niche. <gasps> so if you guys are prepared to see a lot of care guides coming up and a lot of product reviews and vlogs and just a ton of aquarium stuff, then uh, subscribe if you don't mind. Like this video if, it, if you did like it. It was a little long. I'm looking at 22 minutes on this recording right now. Hopefully I'll edit that down and um, I will see you guys next Sunday.